Here's a video film that I've made of Old Eadfield in the Serene district, Districts from 1900 to 1992 and it's made up of old postcards and photographs and also intermingled with actual video film taken today uh, just to show you the difference. Now if you'll you can see in the distance that this is the Old Eadfield Church and have a look at that telegraph pole because you'll see the difference in the next photograph. There's not a lot of cups on there, about a couple of dozen. And the little house has got a store on the right hand side there. Can you see it? And um, there's no hedge in front there at all. You can see the window. Now this photograph, you see the difference in the amount of cups there is on this one. There's, uh, oh, I don't know, about nine dozen cups on there, I should think. And uh, the little house has no longer got a door on the right-hand side, but it's got a, a hedge all round the front. And that little doorway has been made into a window. And uh, now we've come to the entrance to the church. And uh, as you can see, um, there's not a lot of difference in what it looks like today. And, and next we're going to show you what it looks like today. Well now, here we are as it is today. And you can see there's no telephone cups on the telephone poles anymore. And uh, the little hedge is getting a bit sparse. And there's that little window which I said was a door. Um, this little cottage, of course, was built in uh, 1873, as it says on the top. And the tiled roof is quite a nice design, rather nicely designed altogether. Now, we'll come a little closer now and have a look at what it is, it, the entrance. And there's not a lot of difference, except all the trees and hedges have grown up rather high now. Now, the first recorded vicar at this church was a Reverend Dogo, D-O-G-O, -O, unusual name, and this was in 1236. Um, there was originally six bells, and then in 1920, James Grove of Heathfield Park gave two more treble bells and uh, had them hung in the belfry with the others, which made the whole lot, eight bells altogether. Now these two large stone memorials are in memory of Sir John Mortimer and also for the Blunt family. And underneath this is a large vault. And um, we'll go and have a look and see the actual entrance to this vault in a few seconds. And. Um, it's quite a, a big door, but you can't see it because it's down under the ground. Now we're looking at the other end of the vault where the entrance is. And now, here is the actual grill that prevents anybody from going down in the vault. And when my mother was a young girl uh, at school, they used to run round this for seven times and then run like the very devil because it was said that the devil would come out and rattle this chain. I don't think the kids would believe that kind of thing now. Now, farther down in the new part of the church, there's another vault underneath this big stone memorial. And this is uh, uh, in memory of a Mr. John Hart. And uh, he gave this grand to the church for a burial place. And he also gave the right of way which did belong to him originally, to come into the church down through the roadway, which goes down to the um, what used to be the vicarage. Now, this is, we've come the other side of the church now, and um, this is the road going up towards the Star Hotel. And these are the cottages on your left as you go up to the Star Hotel, and the wooden building at the very end of the photograph it used to be a carpenter's shop, which is not there anymore. And now we've come to what it looks like today, looking up at the star. And there's those cottages where we just saw the photograph a few minutes ago. 
And of course, behind this little hedge and little bush here, used to be this little carpenter's shop. Now, we've come right up to the actual star, and it looks like the star cat is enjoying herself in the sun and rolling in the dust and dirt. Now, it's said that this star inn was originally built to house the workers that was repairing or building the church, and it was built in 1348, so it's quite an old building. And if you take a care and have a look around this building, you can see where several bits have been built on since the original. Now, as you come away from the star, on your left-hand side is these row of cottages. And these are rather picturesque cottages with their little rockery gardens. And um, these have been here a good many years, no doubt. I don't know the actual age of them. But as you go down this road and past these things, and then go on the Vines Cross Road or the Heafield Road, um, you will come across this little, well, I call it a grotto. And I can remember it always being filled up with water in the bottom and having frogs and tadpoles in them. But now, I've got an uncle that's nearly uh, near enough 90, and um, he said that uh, they always used to have a drink out of that when they came back from school, as they used to walk back from Old Efield School to Alexander Road every day, of course. And um, what it was actually built for, we don't know. Now, we come down the Vines Cross Road, and we get to this little crossroads here. One goes to Efield and Sandy Cross, and the other one to Vines Cross. Now, if we go down um, the hill, which is Weaversbrook Hill, we have come to this other little signpost, which is Sandy Cross Road on the right, and Old Efield, and then um, we come back up to the Park Road on the left. Now, looking straight across from that crossroads, you'll see these signs and uh, Barrett's Park Farm uh, Fishing Lakes. And you go down this little um, roadway and you can look to your left and you'll see this shot of Old Efield Church in the distance. And um, we come down lower still and get to this gateway. Now this gateway, I go through this gateway and, and then we've come to this great big pond which used to be here and this is an old photograph of what it used to look like and um, this was quite a big expanse of water and the water used to drive a water mill for grinding wheat and corn and oats and all that kind of thing but this is what it looks like today the whole expanse of water is completely overgrown and filled up with mud and bulrush and all that kind of thing now, those bluebells in the distance on the bank is the bank on the other side of this pond. Uh, you'd never believe that there was this expanse of water here at one time. Now, as we turn round to the right, we can see the actual trackway or roadway that used to lead to the mill where the old horse and carts used to go along with the corn, etc., to have it ground. And uh, here's another bit of it as we are a little long farther along the pathway. Uh, of the actual pond, and it's, and it's right up this end, which is the east end of the pond, it's still all overgrown and even got trees in it. Now, in this track here, in the front here, you go down a slight dip, and the actual mill pond mill and the house was down here. And here's an old shot of the actual mill house. The old man on the right-hand side um, is a Mr. Tommy Oliver. And he used to live in this house with his sister. And to get a living, he used to grow vegetables and fruit and all that kind of thing. And his garden was up on the top left-hand corner of the picture where that row of poplar trees are. And I've got an uncle that's near enough 90 years old, and he used to come down here when he was a boy and uh, remembers quite a bit about it. And this old uh, chap used to grow all these vegetables and and sell them in the local shops and the market, no doubt. Um, my uncle doesn't remember that shed being there in just to the left of the house. But during the winter, when the, f when the pond was all frozen over, uh, and the lads and everybody used to come down here at night and have candle lit lit lighted candles in um, jam jars all around the edge of the pond 
to show where the edge of the pond was for their skating and fun. And they also used to come down here fishing a lot. Now, as my uncle remembered so much about it, I thought I'd go along to his home with my camera and actually ask him what it was really like in the days when this pond was... Uh... Now, uncle, does this remind you of any place that you know? Yeah, did goodness know? me, it's the old mill pond near Old Eafield. Yeah? Yes, I can remember the old house and Tommy Oliver lived in it. But I don't remember the shed there at the side being there. And he used to have a garden along where those poplar trees are. And he used to grow vegetables and fruit. And I remember meeting him up the park wall road with a basket on his arm and he said to me, how many strawberries you'd think I grow last year? I said, I've no idea, Tommy. And he said, 50 pounds worth. <laughs> and I would also remember that in the winter, when the lake was frozen over, that the people around the younger generation uh, having candles with uh, jam jars in. Yeah. and uh, skating on there. And also remember coming from Odefield School in the dinner hour to have a slide and it was frozen in ripples of the part of the pond and you went across these until you come to smooth ice and I remember falling backwards on my head and that gave me a shaking up. Oh wow, well, you remember quite a bit about the mill pond then. Yes, we used to go fishing in there. Yeah, yeah. Yes. We've now come back to the overgrown mill pond and this little river that runs down here, uh, all the water in here runs actually from the Heafield Park Lakes. And then it runs along the left-hand side of the picture here under the undergrowth and eventually finds this little um, tunnel which runs under a little walkway over the head here. And um, then it goes through the tunnel. Go through this tunnel and have a look at the mill race in a moment or two and let you see what it's actually like. Now at the top of the mill race and it's rushing down over here by the gallons. Well hundreds of gallons must run through here in the course of a day and um, it's all made up of bricks and it's like a great big steps going from the bottom which must be about 20 feet down I should think and there's the water actually running down through the um, over the mill race to the bottom and then it goes into a river and out to Vines Cross. Come back up past the old Eastwood church again and we've come to School Hill and this is what school, school Hill used to look like in the 1900s and uh, you'll see in a little while what it looks like today and you'll see that those um, houses which show up quite clear have got taller hedges nowadays. Now up there where that... Uh, now the white building on the right hand side used to be an undertaker's and um, the school is next door to that of course. And now the scene we're going to look at is what it looks like today. And there it is. And as you can see the trees have grown up quite a bit. Although the walls and all haven't altered. And of course where I said the white building was on the right hand side, that's also got trees grown up in front of it and, and you can't hardly see it. So quite a, thi a few things like trees and things have altered, but the actual road hasn't. Now, if you look up the ro go up the road to where that white building was and look over the opposite road, uh, you'll see the, this little cottage and it's called Cooper's Spinney. And I guess that at some time, years ago, there probably was a, a, spi uh, a Cooper lived here and done his work making barrels and things. They come to Old Eafield. Come to Old Eafield School. My mother went here to school. 
Now we've gone right up to the corner uh, to where the Prince of Wales tree is, which is a conker tree or a horse chestnut tree. And it's got a, a little kind of island of greenery in the middle of the road. And as we turn left here and go around to the corner, we should see the Heathfield Park gates. And now this is the main entrance to the Heathfield Park mansion. And there we are looking at the back of the mansion. I haven't got a photograph of the front of the, the mansion, so I can't show you that. Now from here we've gone back down to the Prince of Wales's tree and we're looking eastwards along this road and there's an old hostess. Now we've come farther up the road and we've come to the Heathfield Memorial, War Memorial, and um, this commemorates all the dead of Heathfield that got killed in the 1914-18 war and also in the last war. Now on the other side of this road uh, where the memorial was um, is this shot of these houses and these houses haven't altered much. Now in the distance on the right hand side is the pub which is called the Jack Cade pub nowadays but it used to be the Half Moon and opposite that are these cottages and these cottages are still here today, which we will see in a little while, but they've done a little alterations on the front of them. This is the actual shot of the Half Moon pub, now called the Jack Cade pub, and I don't know what was going on here this day, but it looks to me as if there were, um, the kiddies were out from school or something, and all these little girls have got pinafores on, and the cook's standing there with his white hat and white coat on. Here's another shot outside the same pub and this time it's a shot of the Cuckoo Fair that used to be held here every year around about the 14th of April and uh, there's those cottages on the other side which you saw just now but it used to be quite a big do this fair and um, here's another shot opposite the pub now with the Air Training Corps Heathfield Air Training Corps, um, having a church parade, and we paraded there. And you see the arrow on the wall of the house is pointing to a chap there. Well, that happens to be me, as I was in the ATC at, just before the, well, during the war, of course. And um, we used to have church parades about once a month, and come up here, and then uh, march down to the church. Now, here's a, a modern postcard of the Jack Cade pub with the sign there. And um, the houses haven't altered much. And that's the house, that white house there on the right-hand side, um, where we had our parade that day. And it looks, uh, nowadays, they've got a bit of grass out the front instead of it being just plain. Uh, there's a shot of what it looks like today, all very modern. Now in one of these houses on the left here, there's this stone seat, which is rather an unusual thing. It's set in the wall, but what it's all about, I do not know. Uh, obviously it was it's some sort of a seat, and where it came from, I've no idea of the history at all. On the other side of the road, on the Jack Cade side, is this stone house, which is a very elegant looking house, all built of stone, and it must be a very strong built house I should think by the look of it. Now we go up a little farther up the road here towards Punish Town and we see the old Jack Cade stone and this commemorates um, the capture of Jack Cade who was a notorious um, rebel and he was caught by uh, caught near this place and he was uh, caught by the Sheriff of Kent, and uh, he was uh, beheaded. Now we've come along, a little farther along the road, and we get to White Chapel, which stands up on the hill and shows up for miles around. And beyond the White Chapel is this corner called Chapel Corner. And this is quite an old photograph with the old horse and cart standing outside. But it hasn't altered much, this corner, even those fir trees are still there today. 
now we've gone along a little farther and we've got to Punnetstown School. Um, the school is a little different today, it's been a bit built onto it. And this is Punnetstown again and it's called School Hill. And um, now we go along this road and come to the barley mow. Now the barley mow has been here for a good many years and the little shop right on the end is the Punnetstown post office. And as you can see here, it's just a tin roof. Today, of course, it's a little bit different. And uh, here's another shot of it, looking down Flitterbrook Lane. And uh, this little shop here, of course, has altered quite a bit now. As we shall see in a little while, we'll see a shot of what it looks like today. Um, this fence is no longer there. Now, there's the shot of today's filming of the barley mow. And uh, as you can see, it's somewhat different to what it used to be on that old photograph. And uh, I am told they have very good meals here. And they also do wedding receptions. And there's the little shop on the end. Still the post office. And uh, little general stores, of course, but has been modernised quite a bit. And it's called the village shop. Punnetstown Village Shop. Now we've come farther along that road and we've got into Punnetstown itself now and there's a baker's shop on the left hand side where this very very old car is and along where those lorries stand is Cornford's Garage and there used, to, there used to be a shop on the right hand side also run by Mr Cornford and uh, they used to sell more or less anything in that little shop. But that old car is certainly ancient, isn't it? I bet it would be worth a bit of money now if you've got it today. Here's another shot looking on the other side of the road. And there's an old Austin 7, that looks like an old Austin 7 standing there. And you can see Cornford's shop there. And on the shop sign, it does say Nut Brown, which is tobacco, of course. And um, this little bit of white on the right-hand bottom corner is the entrance into the butcher's shop, which was Havenden's. And there is another shot of it, looking down towards Heathfield. And you can see those two white rain balls there on the left-hand side of the picture. Um, that is the actual lights from the Cornford's garage that used to be there. And this is the little shop on the left hand side here which is the baker's shop which used to be Punnetstown Bakery. We've now got to North Street. Now this North Street um, the buildings are still there of course but they've all been altered and modernized to what they are here on this old photograph going back into the 1900s. Now there's the Punnetstown Bakery and it's called, still called the old bakery but it's now a furnishing shop where they make furniture and re reupholster it at all. Now there we are looking along, and that is the butcher shop. And now we're just looking up towards North Street. And there's the sign saying North Street there. Now we'll turn around and we'll look up towards North Street. And you see those buildings are more or less the same, but they've been modernized and new windows and that type of thing. Now, if we go up the North Street, we get to this Punnetstown Mill, which is owned by Mr. Dalloway. Now, there used to be two mills, and you can just see one on the left-hand bottom corner of the picture here, the, which that one, of course, has been taken down long ago. But this one's still in good order and good condition. And here it is, what it looks like to die. Still in very good order and good condition. I'm not sure whether it's still in working order or not. And um, it had quite a bit of damage done to it, I think, when the gales, when we had those terrific gales a few years back. And there used to be a little propeller on the back where those two bits of wood stick out. 
and that used to drive the head of the windmill round to face the wind all the time. Now we've come down and back onto the main road and we're on the east side of Punnetstown and this is the row of bungalows which are on the right hand side as you come out of Punnetstown. Now we've got to Three Cups and this is the Three Cups Inn or pub. And this is quite a few years old. This old photograph is very, very faded and must be one of the earliest photographs taken of this pub, I guess. But uh, when you see it in a few moments as it is today, you'll see the total difference. Now, there we are. Um, it looks as if they've had a little bit built out towards the front of the uh, pub. And, of course, the old sign is still there with the three cups and it's called the three cups in of course and there we are and you can sit out on the grass and have your pint of beer if you want to now we've come back along the road towards Eastfield and we've come to the Crane Hotel and this is a very very early photograph of the Crane Hotel and as you can see there it's just got one entrance which is on the uh, west side of the Crane Hotel and of course all the frontage here is all open. Now we've come a little more modern and we've come to the Heathfield Crane Hotel uh, on a market day and you see all the old farmers there with their old cars and the trucks and they look a bit ancient. They must be in the 19, more between 1920s and 30s I suppose. And here we are today um, as the market is and you can see they've got two entrances in the hotel now, so they've obviously had another one built after the earlier photographs were taken. There's still quite a busy market here on a Tuesday morning. Now from now we've gone along the Broad Oak Road, and this is Broad Oak Garage as it used to look many years ago. Quite different today, of course, with all its pumps and forecourt. But, um, it's funny to see these old photographs, just to look back to see what it used to look, look like. Now we've gone along a little, far. we've come to Uplands Park, which it used to look like, and this was a big, big house. And even today, that wall is still standing there. But of course, there's the big block of flats been built in place of Uplands Park House nowadays. Now we've come along to the little um, news agents and sweet shop which is still there today, of course, and you can just see an old-fashioned car standing on the side of the road in the far left-hand corner of the picture. Now we've turned around and looking along the road towards Scotsford Road and Halley Road, and you could just see a point sticking up in the centre of the road, above the centre of the road, and that's the hostess that's along farther along towards the, um, the other side of Halley Road. And there's nothing on the right-hand side here at all, as you can see, only along the far distance. Now, as we go along, on the left-hand side, by Scotford Road, there's Isaac Mockford's shop. And this is a very early photograph of his shop, with an awesome cart standing along the side there, probably going to take out the goods and stuff. Um, now, this is a later one of the same shop, and uh, they've had a bit built up above it now for storage, I suppose. But we've still got horses and carts and still a little iron rail in that side. Here's an even uh, another old photograph of it. And um, the balcony along the front there used to hold lots of things like buckets and all that type of thing that Mr. Mockford used to sell. We've now come down Scotford Road and on the left here is Ebenezer Chapel. And there's a sign on the right-hand side of this picture on that wall that says something about corn. So I guess it was a corn merchant's and f animal feed. And the big sheds down in lower down the road, um, one of those had been taken down now to make the car park to the chapel. Now we'll go along now and have a look at the chapel as it is today in a few seconds and um, the chapel itself of course hasn't altered at all and they've still got the iron railing in the front 
Now this is what the corner looks like at Scotsford Road and Halley Road. And um, that's where Moxford's shop used to be, right on the corner there, which has been taken down now. Now there's that place that I said might have been a corn merchants and food stuff. Now we we'll turn round and look at Ebenezer Chapel as it is today. It's still got the iron railings in the front. And um, this chapel was built in 1859 and um, it's a brick building and uh, along the side of the chapel is the burial ground. And that now we've come back to Scotsford Road and Halley Road corner and we are looking across the fields towards Punnettstown once again and in a few seconds we shall see the in the distance the mill which is Dalloway's Mill at Punnettstown and there it is in the middle of the picture right up on the top of the horizon and that's about all I can tell you about Old Efield and the surrounding district in this little film.